All right, everyone, let's look at one last example of this net change theorem. That is to say, well, let's apply the fundamental theorem of calculus to scientific applications here. Uh, and for this, this last example here, suppose we have a bacteria population of 4,000 at the start of some experiment, uh, time equals zero. And we'll be measuring time in hours here. And 4,000 is representing 4,000 bacteria. And the bacteria are growing incredibly fast. They have a growth rate of 1,000 times two to the T. Uh, that seems really, really fast, right? Uh, they're growing 1,000 times two T bacteria per hour. And that's, and, then, and so it actually increases by the hour as well. So this is our population. If population is N of T, this is our derivative, 1,000 times two T, like so. So if we want to change what you know, what's the population after one hour? Uh, to answer that question, we're trying to integrate from zero to one. So there's four thousand at the initial. There's four thousand at the initial quantity there, and then we want to see how. So I should say like how much is there after one hour? What we're trying to find right now is this is going to be the increase. This is the increase after one hour. We're not trying to figure out how many there are after, at one hour yet. We're trying to figure out what's the increase here. So increase after an hour here. So we're gonna integrate from zero to one, the derivative in prime t dt, from what we saw here, uh, that we get 1000 times two t to the t dt. Uh, because this is an integral, we can factor out the 1000, just put it out in front. Integrate from zero to one, two t dt. So we need to find a function whose derivative is 2t. That is how we calculate antiderivatives. Now we know for a fact that the derivative of say like e to the x, that's equal to e to the x. And that tells us that the antiderivative of e to the x dt, that's equal to e to the x plus a constant. But things are a little bit different when you work like base two. If we took the derivative of two to the t with respect to t here, we'd actually get the natural log of two times two to the t. There's this tariff that you have to pay for using the wrong base. And so if we reverse this process, uh, if we wanna reverse this process, we actually get that the integral of two to the t dt, this is gonna equal two to the t, but divided by the natural log, the natural log of two, plus this constant right here. And so that's the principle that we wanna use in this exercise here. The antiderivative of two to the t, uh, this is gonna give us a natural log of two in the denominator, then we get two to the t, um, we want to go from zero to one. Plugging in one is going to give us a two. So we get 2000 over the natural log of two. And then we subtract from that t to the zero, right? Well, t to the zero is not zero. t to the zero is actually one. So you get 1000 over the natural log of two right there. All right. And so then subtracting those, because they both have a common denominator of natural log of two, you end up with 1000 over the natural log of two. And we could estimate what that value is if we so wanted to. So this right here is, this right here represents the uh, net change. This is the amount of increase that happened in that first hour. Well, what, what does that say for us? We were trying to figure out what the population was at exactly at one hour. That was the question we had to do. And the population after one hour, that's gonna be your initial population, which was n of zero, plus the increase. How much did it increase from zero to one hour? And so we know it started off with 4,000 bacteria, and then we just added 1,000 over the natural log of two. And that is approximately, I can write that approximation right here. That's approximately 5,442. Um, 0.7, we'll round to the nearest uh, bacterium. So we'll say that's approximately 5,443. Uh, that's a good enough estimate here. Uh, you, you can't have half of a bacteria or anything like that, bacterium. Um, so that's gonna be our, our final answer right there. And I wanna mention here that this idea of using the net change is really what we've already were doing. At the end of chapter four, as we started talking on antiderivatives, we were basically doing this process already, um, just in a slightly different perspective. Notice what we saw before is that our population n of t, it was gonna equal the integral of n prime of t dt. If we know the antiderivative, we can calculate it. 
Um, and so in this situation, if we're integrating, uh, was it 1000 t to the uh, two to the t there dt, we end up with 1000 over the natural log of two, two to the t plus a constant, right? We had to know what that constant was. And to determine what the constant would be, we would look at some initial value in of zero, which would tell us we had 1000 over the natural log of two times two to the zero plus a constant right here, uh, which that first part would just become 1000 over the natural log of two plus a constant. But then we, we would realize, oh yeah, that's what, if you plug zero into the function, that's what you get. But we also know it's equal to 4,000 right here. And so plugging these things in here, we can recreate uh, this expression that we had before. So I want you to be aware that if you're looking for just the net change, like in this case, just the increase, you can integrate the definite integral and I'll give you the net change, which was, was that uh, this 1000 over the natural log of two we saw before. But if you're actually trying to figure out what is a specific value at N1, well, you can do what we did here, right? You can take, you can calculate the increase from some un, from some known value N of zero, but that actually matches up with this initial value problem we were doing before with antiderivatives. So kind of further solidifying this idea that the fundamental theorem calculus tells us that uh, derivatives and in integrals are inverse operations, this this net change process we've been talking about in section 5.4 in these lectures connects the idea that this net change is really capturing this idea of anti-differentiation that we we're doing before, uh, thus validating once again, the fundamental theorem of calculus. Uh, and that brings us to the end of section 5.4 about net change, uh, which really was just an opportunity to look at story problems involving integrals, right? Um, appreciate you watching the videos here. If you like them, uh, that would be great. Post some comments. If you have any questions, I'll be happy to answer them. Um, and as usual, if you want to see some more of these videos, feel free to subscribe so you can get notifications or more information about this channel in the future. I will see you next time, everyone. Keep on calculating. Bye.